recent blog post, I wrote about rendering breadcrumbs, and I started out with just the generated HTML. And towards the end, I had a partial where I was able to render out the breadcrumbs from my view just by passing in a content for breadcrumbs and then an array of the different tags that will be present. However, there are a few things I have an issue with with this approach, and specifically with parsing the JSON every time. And it also seems like there's just way too much logic in this view partial than what's really needed to accomplish this. And a lot of times when I'm doing development, I'll follow a red-green refactor even if I'm not doing tests. And with something simple like breadcrumbs, I'm not really going to follow a test-driven development, nor would I really extensively test this, since it's something that's not a crucial part of the application, and it's not something that you can really mess up once you have it working properly. So I would consider the blog post from the red to green transition where I have an idea and I have a problem and I want to solve this. So I'm just going to get this working however I can. And if the code is a bit messy or if it's less than ideal, that's okay because I just need to get it working. And once I have it working, then I can work on the refactoring, which is cleaning up the code, making it more efficient, making it faster without changing the output of the code. So just to give you a quick overview of what we have set up, we're first within our application HTML ERB or our layout file, we are rendering a layout breadcrumbs. And this file is where we are actually displaying the code to generate the breadcrumb. And then within our view, we can just call a content for breadcrumbs and then pass in an array of items that we want to be used within the breadcrumbs. So with refactoring, there's really two parts. There's cleaning up the code so it's more readable, it's more functional, but then also to make it faster. So one thing that you want to do before you start refactoring some code is to get a baseline of where things are at. And as of Rails 4, they took out the Rails perf test, but it is something that you can add back into your project to run performance tests against your application and specific endpoints. So because we're going to be benchmarking our application and the breadcrumbs, then we'll want to add in the Rails perf test. And because we are also using the MRI, which is the Matz's Ruby interpreter, we're also going to add in the Ruby prof. So in the development and test group, I'm going to add in the two gems. Be sure to run but on restart your Rails application. So next, what I'm going to do is replace the render layout breadcrumbs with benchmark breadcrumbs and then rendering the layout. And this will give us some neat console information. So if we launch a Rails application and if we refresh the page, you'll now see that we get a log in our console where it shows how long it took the contents of that benchmarking block to execute. And as you can see here, the breadcrumb partial where we're parsing out the JSON, it's taking about 2.1 milliseconds. If we refresh again to get a couple of benchmarks, now we have 1.7, 1.6, and 1.6 again. However, this isn't a really good scenario because you can see where we're getting wide fluctuations, and granted, this is just milliseconds. So we want to be able to test us a bit better to where we can run many tests on this one partial or on just the view itself. And then within the application folder, I'll just type Rails generate performance test homepage. And this will generate a file called homepage test under the test performance folder. And if we open up that test file, this is what it looks like. You can see that we have our homepage test and it's inheriting from the action dispatch performance test. And there are some profile options that we're able to customize. And in our case, I'm going to run this a hundred times to see what the output is. So it'll run this test homepage where it just gets the root path a hundred times. And then back in our terminal, we can call Rails test benchmark, and this will load up the test scenario and it'll run the benchmark for this one item. And you can see running it a hundred times, it executed in about 3.15 seconds. So now we have a pretty good baseline. And if we run this again, you know, we can kind of compare the numbers, but it should be pretty similar to this. And you can see again, we are right around the 3.15 seconds. And so within the application helper, I've created this breadcrumbs helper method, which just accepts in an array. And this array is the same array that we've been using with the other breadcrumb. And because we are passing an array into a method, we don't have to JSON parse out the string. And once we've built out the breadcrumbs, we can just return the HTML. And then in the breadcrumbs partial, we can remove everything, and then we would just have the yield breadcrumbs. And then within our index, 
For the content for breadcrumbs, I'm just going to pass in the breadcrumbs helper. And then with the breadcrumbs helper, we just pass in our array. And then refreshing our page, you can see that it still renders out exactly the way it did before. And if we look now that the breadcrumbs, it's now rendering a little bit faster, 1.2 milliseconds instead of about the 1.6 that we were getting before. So it definitely looks like we have increased our speed a bit. And if we run the Rails test benchmark again, hopefully we'll see something a little bit faster than 3.15. And so now you can see that we finished 100 requests in about 3.10 seconds. So overall, we really probably didn't save too much CPU cycles, but the code is a little bit cleaner. So let's see if we can clean this up even a bit more. Now that we only have one line in our breadcrumbs, we really don't need this file. Instead, in the application HTML, we can just call yield breadcrumbs. And if we run the benchmark again, hopefully it'll be a little bit faster than the 3.10. And so I ran it two times, and you'll see that it ran it in 3.14 and 3.11. So this actually seems a little bit slower. However, this is an acceptable speed sacrifice because I think that this is a lot cleaner. So our end code would look something like this, where we just have our yield breadcrumbs, and that's going to yield out if we have the content for. So remember, if you're on that red to green stage where you're just trying to get the code to work, don't forget that you do need to come back and go from your green to refactor because it is an important step for maintaining the application. And if you have too much sloppy code like that JSON parse within your views and too much business logic within the views, then you're going to create a lot of technical debt within the application. And if you never get back to the refactor stage, then you're always going to be adding more and more technical debt to the application to the point where it's almost unmaintainable. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching.